Welcome back. Now, earlier this year, Linda Barker emerged from the Australian outback as the undisputed queen of the jungle. We spoke to her on her return to the UK, and it was clear why she won so many hearts on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. Before we see that again, here's a little reminder of her in action. <laughs> Like little fat Buddha. Hey, I'm house proud. Yeah, I'd like um, a vase of flowers and yeah, I'd like a clean so floor. You don't never need help from nobody else. Oh, you got to do Oh, Anthony, are you sure you're all right? I'm fine, I'm fine. Well, yeah, unless you want some serious problems, you better sort the bloody food out, mate. Whatever you do. Four <laughs> <laughs> Here you know, she you is. were so up for it, weren't you? Oh, I so was. I had a ball. I really did. I enjoyed every minute of it. Well, not quite every minute. We were very hungry in the first week, mm. you know. We've talked to uh, some of the others about that, that, that first week, and, yeah. uh, and because you were all getting on so well, mm. uh, and that, that, I mean, that seems to be why the food was beginning to get withdrawn, just to make you spark. I think so. They were definitely it stirring it up in camp. But we were a really solid group, which was fantastic. Mm. I mean, to throw ten unknown people, you know, to, together, we'd never seen each other, you know, spoken to each other, into a, that kind of environment and asked to get on. And we did, you know, we really made the most of it. It was a very strong group. It's terrific. I couldn't remember. A lot of other people did a bit of bitching and talking, as it would, would happen, but I can't remember seeing anything of you actually bitching, but we did see, of course, crying. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, when the letters moments. from home were delivered. Well, that's it. I mean, you're in that environment, and I had a kind of mindset that this is what I wanted to do. I said goodbye to Chris and Jess, thought, right, I'm going to do this, do the best I can. And that was it. It's kind of like a job. You know, you focus yourself, do the job. And, and I stayed in long, longer and longer, got stronger and stronger. But those moments where I realised, you know, about Chris and Jess and at home and... And it, I was just like, whoa! Well, let's have, let's have, I mean, you really were distressed. This is, <laughs> this is where you all had your letters. Everyone was reading their letters out. Anthony is reading his out. Yes. And you're still sobbing over yours. Oh, OK. Dear Linda, babe, there's been some terrible mistake. Evidently, you guys have all been sent to the wrong location <laughs> and you're now in a frightening remake of Tenko. Mm -hmm. Try not to worry about us. The room service can sometimes be a couple of minutes late. <laughs> and the pool might benefit from being a couple of degrees warmer, but we're determined to struggle through to the end. Jessica has done pretty much <laughs> oh, every man. wildlife park and roller coaster ride in Queensland, <laughs> so is finally ready to make some time available should you wish to come out. Oh, I man. rather miss you. You're right about the cheekbones, they're pretty gorgeous. <laughs> Just a pity they're a little out of reach. Love you, babe. Bring it on, Chris and Jessica, well and done. loads of kisses. Well it's a lovely letter. So it sort of unsettled you there because oh, you really? weren't. You, you got yourself into that, as you yeah. said, that mindset. You yeah. said goodbye. I'll do this for a fortnight, and yeah. it'll be okay. But that sort of came in and took your legs from underneath. Well, it did. I mean, it was unbelievable because it was late at night. We'd had a, a little drink, just a little drink, and we went back pleading for just one more drink would be nice to finish the night off. And they said, well, wait. You know, we've got a, we've got a, a special treat for you that might be better than wine. Now, at the time, it was like nothing could be better than another glass of wine at that stage. So we were thinking, what on earth is it? So it was so unexpected when I went into the Bush Telegraph and saw this envelope and I knew immediately, you know, messages from home and I couldn't believe it. Mm. It was that reality check, yes. you know? Um, because you're in such a strange environment and, and you know, you, you're away from everything that you know and you're kind of ha working really hard to kind of make yourself grounded and get on and do the job. So that reality check was just bizarre. It was just really bizarre. And it just, I mean, it was just full on emotion. So you didn't think once you were, when you're in the camp there and you're sobbing your eyes out, didn't think, I wish I'd had the wine now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, it really was better than another bottle of wine. I can tell you, it was. Well, of terrific. course, everybody in there needed a cuddle, um, yeah. including Bash. <laughs> Do you think your wife would give me a nice big cuddle? Probably. Yeah. Wonderful. Do we all just queue up? Do you want one? Who's meeting you, Bash? Yes, it's nice to have a cuddle, isn't it? Aww. Oh yeah. Thank you, darling. Ah, oh, that's nice. You see, it is good, isn't it? Mm. Well, he um, loved that, didn't he? So he really, really needed, sort of needed it there. That was a breakthrough between Fash and I, because I did have a problem, and I said to him, I've got a problem with you, mate, in the first week, because 
He was so tough and doing the, that exercise regime, he was almost punishing himself because there was very little food as well. So he was almost on the verge of collapsing a few times, you know, went to lie down in bed to recover from this exercise. I said, I've really got a problem with him. I don't understand where you're coming from. Mm. And so that moment where he wanted a hug was his way of just like being human. And I thought, well, my God, I can deliver you a human and, and gave it, just grabbed him. And we hugged for a long, long time. And that was the kind of him opening up. And I saw that human side to Fash. And we got on brilliantly ever since that. But sometimes hugs, you feel the physical connection, don't you? Not yes. just the touch of skin against skin, but something no. really happens, Oh, it was it? a real kind of mental mm. thing. And I think that, that's about me. You know, I like touching people. I like giving people hugs. I'm very much a kind of... You know, if they want something from it, it's a hug and it's a touch. You know, that's kind of the. Well, you got you got on very well, obviously, when we were the, the relationship, the sort of the threesome, and uh, and you got on very well with Phil. Um, yeah. And there was there was a sort of quite quite a lot of sort of touchy touchy feeling with him as well, the sort of stroking back uh -huh. and, and all that sort Usually of stuff. Usually after a couple of glasses. After a few glasses yeah. late at night. Yeah, I mean that's true. I think the papers have made quite a fun of a, a song and dance of that, which is really quite funny. You know, mm. we're, we're laughing at the papers at the weekend it's hysterical well, let's, have, let's have a look at the uh, let's have a look at the clip oh, and yes. then we'll then then we'll, yes, we'll yes. Come back to that. <laughs> okay. you've been through this <laughs> to yeah. make some pretty okay mates out of this yeah. and if you can turn around and slam them in the face like that then forget it anyway enough said <laughs> everyone in so. their cups i think as well slightly <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it is tough. I mean, Phil is a real friend of mine, and, and that was very unexpected to go into the jungle in that environment and come out with a couple of really good friends. Um, and, and at times, when, you, when you're pushed to your limit like that, you're, you're low, you're high, you, you go through the whole gambit of emotions. And Phil, at times, was really low. And I knew him, I kind of knew him strangely because you can't have that level of communication because you know you're on microphones all the time. I knew when he was really, really down mm. and almost to the point of losing it. So a touch like that would ground him. Mm. And that was really important between us, that we had that level of communication. We understood each other in a way. The, um, the, the, the papers this weekend were full with the, uh, with the if looks could kill yeah, yeah. picture. This, uh, this one know. here. I know. Isn't it cruel? And, and presumably you had a photographer just snapping a thousand pictures yeah. every second yeah, we and managed to get that shot. Managed. I mean, That's Dawn... That's you looking at Dawn. Phil's and Dawn, Dawn is yeah. a fantastic woman. Uh, we, Phil said to me, you're going to love Dawn when you get out. And uh, likewise, I said to him, well, you're going to really love Chris when you get out. And strangely, you know, the three of us, Anthony, Phil and I, in the jungle was that, that kind of bond. It was happening outside as well, you know, with Dawn, with Chris, my husband, oh, and with yes. Jay, with Anthony. So the three of them... Oh, Hotel together. All in the hotel together. So it was mirrored because we get on it enormously well. And I think, you know, the paper hysteric. You know, we've got a new puppy this weekend, and those newspapers came in really handy <laughs> <laughs> in, the, in the little pet pen. You know, fantastic. And so what, uh, what about your uh, what about your new image? I mean, this uh, the, the the look at this. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great, isn't it? You know, I'm 41, you know. I thought, if people want to look at my body when I'm 41, bring it on, you know. <laughs> Absolutely bring it on. I've had a ball with this. And I think the great thing about this is that people have seen another side to Linda Barker. I'm, I'm a real mate. I love my friends. I'm up for a laugh. I'm up for a challenge. And I just enjoyed every second Well, I thought that. you were fantastic. We've enjoyed Your trials watching. were Thank great. You. It was just brilliant. I must say, she does look amazing, doesn't she? <laughs> That's it from us. We are back at 11.30 tomorrow, along with prime suspects Helen Mirren. Also, the creator of Anne Summer's Underwear invites us into her rather luxurious country mansion. Plus, Chris Tarrant's wife Ingrid joins the creators of The Lion King in Africa and Anna Walker's taking on John Scott in Beat the Stylist. All that and more. We'll see you tomorrow at 11.30. Bye-bye. And the winner of yesterday's competition...